The feeling of emptiness has led a lot of people to try different things to feel themselves just to numb that feeling. When my phone battery gets low, a pop-up notification will inform me to optimize the phone because its functionality will reduce. And that tells me to charge the phone and plug it to the source. When I'm hungry in my body, I will feel weak and feel irritable at most. I will not function at an 100% and that will tell me to reduce the tax that I'm doing to get food. Same thing happens to our soul. When your soul is in a place of emptiness, it means it is hungry. It is a signal that your soul needs fuel, food to nurture itself. Just as it happens with your body, that when you are hungry, you feel irritable, you feel so uncomfortable, and you need food to be nurtured, same thing happens to your soul. Your soul needs attention whenever you feel empty. So right here, as much as you pay attention to your stomach infrastructure, pay much more attention to your soul infrastructure. The Bible says, guard your heart with all due diligence because the issues of life flow from it. Once your soul gets empty to a certain limit whereby it gets to the yield point, it could lead to other things that will affect your life. It could lead to you making decisions that are going to affect the course of your life. And that's why you need to deal with your emptiness and get filled up so that you can overcome that emptiness. And I would like to encourage you with this. If you're feeling empty, it is not out of place. It is just human. It is a system just like you feel hungry. Feeling hungry doesn't mean it's something that is out of place. You know by now that once you feel hungry, you have a responsibility. Same thing happens to your soul. It is a signal that your emptiness is telling you your soul needs attention, your soul needs fuel. I will start with this point, trusting God with your emptiness. The same way that hunger makes you irritable, unfocused and weak, the emptiness in your soul relates to that. The need for validation, the need for approval from people, the desperation and all kinds of weakness, it is a sign that your soul is weak, it is empty, it is hungry. And we do say playfully that an hungry man is an angry man. Same thing happens to your soul. An hungry soul is an angry soul. By the time your soul is not well fed, you will be irritable. And this affects relationship. Whenever you feel so irritable towards your partner, whether in a dating relationship, marriage, or your friends, it means somehow there is something your soul needs. Your soul needs attention. It is time for you to check mate and know how to feed your soul. Because most of the problems that people have in relationships is not because of the other person. It is because of the insufficiency of one person that leads to the fight inside the relationship. And if you can deal with your emptiness and come to the table full, it will help the other person compliment you instead of the person trying to fill you. And the mistake people make is trying to look for someone to fill a void that is in them. Nobody can fill the void in you. No marriage, no relationship, nothing in this life can fill the void that you feel inside of you. Your loneliness is not a void that anybody can fill. It is a void that you need to work on filling and only God can fill that void. The feeling of emptiness has led a lot of people to try different things to fill themselves just to numb that feeling. But I will tell you, it shows you that your soul needs attention. It is not for you to try and just take anything to numb the feeling, to stop feeling that way. It is for you to be happy that you are even feeling that way so that you can give your soul the attention it needs. It is just as if you were living and you were never hungry. That would pose as a problem. So in life, if you are not sufficiently feeding your soul, there will be a void. And that void is telling you something needs to be done. In trusting God with your emptiness, Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was very hungry. And the Bible says the devil came to him and tempted him and told him, turn the stones into bread. And he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That was the devil coming to Jesus and telling him, numb this hunger, numb this feeling. That is what happens to us most of the time, whereby we feel empty and we are trying to numb the feeling. It's as if Jesus said, I will trust God with my emptiness instead of trying to numb this feeling. He was not trying to deny the fact that he was feeling hungry, but he said that we will not allow the feeling of hunger to decide for me. I will go with God. I will trust God with my hunger. And I will employ you to do the same thing with your soul. You can tell yourself, I will trust God with this emptiness. I'm feeling horny. 
I will trust God with my sexuality. I'm feeling weak. I will trust God with my weakness. Because scripture says, in my weakness, his strength is perfected because his grace is sufficient for me in this place. Wherever I find myself, I'm going to put this to God. I'm going to trust God with this. The scripture Jesus quoted was from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and I would like to read that to you. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. When I read this, I could hear literally when the devil was tempting Jesus, how Jesus was like, the father provided manna for the people of Israel in the wilderness. So I'm in the wilderness and I'm hungry and there's no food here. If the father could provide manna, then every word that proceeds from the father is what I need. I don't need to numb my hunger by allowing a temptation. I don't need to numb my feeling by allowing a temptation. I need to go with God because it is every word that proceeds from his mouth that makes everything possible. Some of the worst decisions you will make in your life will you be inspired from a place of emptiness, which is the need for validation, the desperation, and all those feelings of loneliness and boredom, if you make a decision from such places, like Esau, he made a decision off of a place of hunger and it led him to trade his treasure for cheap beans. If you make a decision from a place of emptiness, you are going to trade your treasure for something cheap. You need to pay attention to your soul and get to feel your emptiness by trusting God with that emptiness. And as I was thinking about this, I wrote this quote down. Temptation will always follow the path of desire to present to you a false sense of satisfaction in your emptiness. But you need to know that you are complete in Christ. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 10, So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. You are complete in Christ. You don't need any other person to be complete. You don't need to go into sexual immorality to be complete. You just need to understand that when I feel empty, it means my soul needs attention and there's something that I need to do. I have a responsibility to feed my soul. Number two, what you need to live daily. In Matthew chapter 6, the scripture says, give us our daily bread. In the scriptures, daily bread means necessary food, necessary bread. Each day of your life, you will face challenges that are unique for each of the day. So every day you wake up, instead of scrolling on social media, instead of going to your stories to watch and feed yourself, because whether you know it or not, your soul is feeding off everything you are reading. Your soul is feeding off everything you are watching. Your soul is feeding off everything you are hearing. So if you cannot guard your ear gate, your eye gate, if you cannot guard these things, it's going to affect you. Because with time, you are going to replicate these things without even knowing that you have taken in things that you shouldn't have taken in. It's just like being hungry and you just see a fast food that you don't even know and you branch and take anything, pick all the junks you can take. Before you know it, it will give you a troubling, running stomach and it's going to bring issues to you. Sometimes I've heard people say, I ate in that place and I felt sick for days. I had to go on medication. It happens and that is what happens to our soul most of the time because we do not even know, but we keep feeding from places we cannot trust. We keep feeding from pots we cannot trust. And because of this, it chokes our soul. And scripture says, pray like this. God, give me my daily bread. Give me what is necessary for me. And that makes you take responsibility. You have to go to God every day so that you can get this daily bread from him. As you wake up, let God be the person you run to. Let God be the person you go to. God, I need my daily bread. You're my father. I trust you. So from today, you can make up your mind. Instead of the junks on TV, the news, the fears that you can take in, instead of all these things that can actually make your soul to be burdened and sap your energy, I can actually go to God and make sure that I'm well fed, that I'm full before I move out. Because I need this energy for my day, 
for me to be able to number my day to account for my day i need this energy i need to be in full capacity as i'm moving out because i'm going to meet people that will be irritating i'm going to meet people who will try my patience I'm going to meet people who will try me and I need to be in full capacity so that my response will not go wayward. And this is a call to be intentional with your intake. Whatever I'm reading should be wholesome. Whatever I'm listening to should be wholesome. Whatever I'm watching should be wholesome. Because, for example, if you keep on feeding yourself with a romantic movie and you are about to practice purity with God in your relationship with Him. My dear, you are putting yourself up for a lot of temptation. I'm not saying you shouldn't watch it, but if that's all you want to feed yourself with, then you have to deal with the feelings of you feeling always like getting to do something. You have to deal with the temptations that are going to come because this is what you're feeding off of and this is what can come out of your soul. Because if you doubt it, why do you watch a romantic movie and you have an arousal when you did not even have that in mind it's because whatever you watch is powerful it is sending signals to your mind to your brain to your hormones to your emotions so it's telling you what i feed my soul is even most important so if you could take so much time trying to plan your diet trying to eat right eat right down here eat Right. In Psalms 42, David says, As the deer longs for streams of living water, so my soul longs for the living God. I thirst for God, the living God. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise Him again, my Savior and my God. Number three, created to be dependent. Sometimes it is not that you don't know what to do, that makes you bored. It is not that you don't know what to do that makes you uneasy and uncomfortable and stuck. It is because you may know what to do but don't have the passion, the drive, the strength to do it because you're just feeling empty. Your soul does not have the capacity to do anything again. It can happen naturally when you don't give yourself enough rest. Your mind cannot do anything again when you wake up. You only try to force yourself, force yourself, but you are burnt out. You were created to be dependent. And your dependency starts first with God. God did not make you and you are an entity on your own. You were not made to be independent of God. You were not even made to be independent of people around you. Such that you will say, I'm self-sufficient. No, you're not. You're not self-sufficient. You need people. You need God. And this is just like a reminder that you were created to be dependent, not independent. Just like every child would depend on the parents for nurture, you need to depend on your father in heaven for nurture so that you can grow and not be stunted in life. Your survival in life is linked to your source, who is God. Your fulfillment and satisfaction in life is linked to your source. And God is your source. You were never meant to do life alone. Solomon came to realize this after he has tried everything. And he was yelling, meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Why am I struggling to get rich? Why am I pursuing all of these things? Because sometimes you might think your purpose is to do these things and get rich. God wants you to be rich, yes. But that's not your purpose. And when Solomon came to the realization, he said, the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. It is not about all this search for things, search for that, search for this. It is the search for God. So your true purpose in life could only be discovered and carried out when you walk with God. That is why even in Genesis, God told Abraham, walk with me and be blameless. Walk with me in your life and that is how you become blameless. That is how you find purpose. Walk with God, that is how you discover your true self. If you don't get to God, how are you going to discover who you really are and what it made you to be? Because it is only a manufacturer that truly knows the purpose and functionality of his creation. And if God created you and you believe it is God that created you, whether you are Christian or not, it is for you to know that God is the only one that can lead you to fulfill your purpose. He is the one to guide and direct you. Because everything that is created by a manufacturer has the manufacturer's guide. And without the guide, you won't put the product or the creation to its optimum use. That is why a lot of people cannot fulfill their destiny. They have ambitions, yes, but still they feel unfulfilled after getting everything that they wanted to get. And that is why you need to return back to the blueprint 
that God is your blueprint. And in life, it is not a thing of fake it till you make it. Because if you fake it in life, you will only make a mess of it and make it worse. You cannot fake life to make it. You cannot even fake it. Oh, you are, you are just trying to live big so that people will see. You are deceiving yourself. The best thing for you to do is walk with God and be serious and intentional about it. God was intentional when he made you. Why do living for him become something that you are shy to be intentional about it? Because it is only God that can bring you to a place of contentment. Like Paul Apostle said, I am content in every situation. Because at this point, I don't even allow anything to trouble me. And he said in these scriptures in Philippians, I know how to live on almost nothing and with everything. If I have abundance, I'm good. If I have nothing, I'm still good. The fact that I don't have anything doesn't reduce who I am. Because who I am is not based on what I have and what I do not have. And he said, I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Now, this is the scripture we like to quote. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know where it comes from? It comes from a place of contentment with walking with God, depending on God, knowing that whether you have much or you have less, it does not reduce who you are. You are already complete in Christ. And that is where you find your identity. That is where you find your purpose in life. Christ is your source. He is your blueprint to do life, to live life, to live in abundance and to live content. Number four, find your safe space. The number one thing that emptiness will make you do is to go into isolation. It wants to make you withdraw from people because you feel like Nobody understands me. Nobody will get me. Your safe space is finding a safe circle of family and friends and people you can trust whereby you can be you. You can share. You can be vulnerable because you need this space. Whether you believe me or not, you need a safe space. You can't do life in isolation. A proverb in my place says, a tree don't stand alone to become a forest. So if you ever want to become something great, you will need people because you need them to hold up space for you. And that is God's best for you. I know the feeling of they may not understand me and how can they even help? The truth is they don't need to understand you, but you know that you need them just for you to be able to pour out your heart and lose that weight and let go of that burden just to be vulnerable and to share. That is what you need them for. And indeed, they cannot solve all your problems. They don't need to have the answers to the questions you have. They don't need to have the answers to the things that trouble you. But you need to have a safe space where you not be judged or criticized or looked down upon. Because Job, in scripture, expected that he would have had a safe circle who understood him. But instead, his friends were there trying to put more fire. To make the fire burn. I and mean, if you have such a circle around you, it is not a safe space for you. You need to find your safe space. Even Jesus in the scriptures needed a safe space. And the twelve was not a safe space. So he needed to find the three. Where he could go up to the Mount of Transfiguration with. And he could lead them into places that others did not know. He could lead them to let them know his secrets. And at this particular point in Jesus' life in Matthew chapter 26, he was at one of the most distressing time in his life and he needed a safe space. The Bible says he took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. That is all he needed. First of all, he just needed to upload his heart to be vulnerable, to share with them. My soul is crushed with grief. The purpose that I have ahead of me, the mission ahead of me is so great that I am grieving already. My soul is distressed. And he did not tell Peter, James and John this so that they can offer any help or start advising him. And this is for you who may be a friend to someone going through something. It is not everything that your friend comes to share with you that you need to offer advice. Some things they just need you to listen. It is not everything that they need you to offer advice. Somehow they might need your perspective and if they do, fine, you can offer. But don't be this friend that is always eager to want to offer solution because you don't have solution to everything. It is human to want to offer solution to people's problems. But then you have to be so aware that some problems, 
They don't share it for you to offer solution. They share it for you to just listen. Just hear me out. This is what I'm going through. I am learning this. And all Jesus needed from the disciples was, stay here with me and keep watch with me. And that is what we need from our friends. That is what we need from the people that is in our circle. Stay here with me. Let me know that you stand with me in this. Let me know you are praying for me. Let me know you are watching this space for me. Let me know you are keeping this space for me. This is our safe space. I hope you have a safe space. I hope you can find a safe space. I hope you can create a safe space because you need it. I need a safe space. My friends need a safe space in me. And I hope I can become a safe space for them. In conclusion, resting is a big part of filling the void of emptiness inside of you. You need to rest so that you can be refreshed. You need to physically do things that are going to help your soul get refreshed. If you need a size, get some. Whatever you need to make sure that you are operating fully, get to do it and make sure that you are sound. You can drop in the comments how you deal with your emptiness and whatever you do to fill the void. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this video is helpful to you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I am Uwe Mepan. This is my YouTube channel. It is a pleasure to have you watch. Thank you so much for watching. I'm smiling at you. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.